feel free to pipe up. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open FAS office hours, community office hours for August 14th. Um, my name's Alex, I'm the founder of Open FAS, and most of you already know me and probably invited you to this meeting, so it's great to have you here. Um, some of the meetings we spend a bit more time talking to everyone, getting um, you know some updates on what you've been working on today. We've got more of a focus on some demos, but there'll be a chance at the end for people to ask questions or to just uh, introduce themselves if they're new. So today I'm going to start with some updates from the project. We've been building a lot of features, some really good cadence at the moment across the community and I think there's some things we should just share. Then we've got some demos. I'm going to show you a GitLab integration with OpenFAS and uh, a new function called Have I Been Pwned? And this is from Troy Hunt's website. What he does is capture when people have basically had a data breach, has all different usernames and passwords, and this allows you to see whether one of your passwords has been um, basically compromised. Martin from my team in Sofia at VMware is then gonna show us OpenFAS Cloud in action. And we, we now have multiple commit statuses there. So with a GitHub integration, each of your functions report separately, which looks really nice. And then Radislav is gonna tell us a bit about ARM virtual machines and how that can help us work with Raspberry Pi. So OpenFAS has this value, which is developers first. And I think the, the following update's really gonna show that OpenFAS is for developers. Some of the new features that we've been working on are authentication by default, which means that when you deploy OpenFAS with Docker Swarm, there's a secret generated for you for your gateway, and you're automatically logged in with the CLI, and then you can use that um, to administrate the system. In Kubernetes, we've made that a lot easier as well by doing some rework on the Helm chart with Stefan, and also pushing all of the official images to Quay.io, now, one of the reasons that we're doing that is so we get vulnerability scanning and right up front, you get to see if there's anything out of kilter with libraries or the version of Golang that we're using and also alerts us so that we have a chance to respond really quickly to anything like that. All of the Docker images have moved over from the functions namespace to the open FAS namespace as well. And we have a Java template, which has already started to get some use and there's a blog post about that. If you're a Java developer, you're interested in following up on that, please take a look. And there's an official blog for OpenFAS. This is something I'm really excited about, and John McCabe helped a great deal here in helping integrate that into the existing website. I think we've got three blog posts already, fourth one published today, and two more lined up. So definitely have a look, add it to your um, feed subscri subscriptions. And then, OpenFAS can now be installed multiple times on Kubernetes, which means that you can have different, completely isolated environments like staging and production, or even multiple teams on the same cluster. There's been some work around adding annotation support, and that was really to serve events. So each function can list what kind of topics it cares about, and then the work in the Kafka event connector will glue those together. One of the other things that allows us to do is just use annotations in Kubernetes and there's already been somebody who turned up and they really needed that feature. And because Ed Wild helped us do that, I was able to say, well, look, it's already there. Um, just go ahead and use it. And that was really nice um, to be able to do that. Now this is zero to zero and back. This means scale, scale to zero. So any function in OpenFAS will automatically scale to zero when it's idle, if enabled. And when we get a call come in for an, an idled function that's at zero replicas in the system using no resources, it gets scaled back up again and traffic's delivered to it. And uh, it's, it can be tuned to be relatively quick as well. One of the other big features is the ability to have a read-only file system, and Lucas helped with this. 
And the idea here is we're going to crack down on security, um, stop any potential writes to the application code. We're already running as a non-root user, which should protect system code. And so this is your belt and braces. You still do have a scratch area in the temp directory where you can write to, to disk if you have some file descriptors, etc. And then something that I think is going to be really useful for people is multiple commit statuses in OpenFAS Cloud. And Martin will show you how that works. So we've done a huge amount. And I think most of this is from uh, probably the beginning of July. So considering the size of the team and the community, this is pretty exceptional. But there's more to do. And there's, there's always more to do. And we can't uh, slow down. So on OpenFAS Cloud, one of the other things that I think we really need to get in to uh, make that user experience even better is a build logs. So it's all great when your function actually builds and there's no errors, but when there's a unit test failure or perhaps you forgot to go format, it's harder for you to get at that data. So you have to do a local build and then check out the error or look at the um, logs with kubectl. So we're looking at a way of making that available in the UI. One of the other big features that I'd love some help with is private repo support. And I have some ideas about how to do this with deploy keys. I don't think it's hard. It's just going to take some time. And then to help this parallel story of being able to run any stateless microservice in OpenFAS and have it manage it, scale it, and do metrics, we're looking to add additional REST verbs. So right now we have get and post. We're looking to add delete, put, and patch. And Ed Wild, thank you for stepping up. He, he's taken that on. He's going to start working on it. And that is going to be a vertical slice through the whole of the application. Also, one of the other things that one of our users is needing is the ability to put any path or parameter after the function name when it's invoked. So some arbitrary string, like here we're getting the invitation for employee 10 in function 1. Um, Again, some of these changes look minor, but as a project maintainer, I have to think, are there going to be any backwards compatibility issues? Are we going to break um, the contract for anybody who's using this in production? So we've got to be really careful. Um, also, you need help with writing new blog posts. Currently have one in the pipeline from, um, from Richard, and I think Ed has an idea for one too. So if you've got an idea for a blog post for the official site, um, it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be huge or complicated. Please um, step up, let me know, and uh, we can show you how to do that. The other thing where we really need a bit more help is around the function store. This was launched just before, I think it was either KubeCon or Open Source Summit last year. And we've had an initial set of submissions around machine learning and other things like that but there's still a whole load of things we could do here that will be really useful to users, like resizing images and um, whatever other ideas you have. So please have a look at what's there and make some suggestions. So I wanted to talk a bit about the production users that we have. And this is something that I was advised to look into by Alexis Richardson that chairs up the TOC at the CNCF. Um, he said, who are your users, find out, write them down somewhere. And so now we have a whole bunch of different companies here that have come forward and said that we're using OpenFAS. This is a key part of our solution. We're delivering functions. And, you know, there's big and small companies here, including um, Patricio from Vision Banco over in Paraguay. And they're using OpenFAS to drive parts of their um, home banking system. Now, one of the reasons why that's useful for them is because they're on part of a digital transformation journey. They have a, a large legacy monolith and having stability issues. So they've been able to break away small parts of that, bypass raw containers and go straight to functions and open FAS, gaining the metrics and monitoring and that user experience we're all used to. Um, and it, they're looking to add even more there. So that's... Um, a really good story. 
hoping to add a bit more detail in about some of these. And again, if you know of other companies, please uh, encourage them to, to comment and let us know. One of the other things that I think is important is to be looking at the wider ecosystem and different integrations that we can be doing. You probably noticed something that I'm quite active at and other people are in the community too. Um, some of the ways we can be um, building connections is with uh, the VMware team. So we have the FAS team with Martin, who's an intern working with us in Sofia. Jimmy is building up a small community within Sophia who meet once a week to talk about open fares um, internally within the company and externally as well, which I'm finding quite exciting going along to those meetings and you never know what, what's going to happen there. And that's how Radislav ended up coming along today. And then um, Ivana, Ivana as well, who many of you will have seen working and uh, I think in the top five committers now for open fares. So we have Paranka, so welcome to Paranka and her colleagues from GitLab. GitLab's shown an interest in, in serverless and uh, we've been chatting away over the last few weeks about you know, what does serverless mean for containers um, and I have a quick demo of, of how I think you could start using OpenFAS with GitLab today. There's a short blog series coming. Um, I've probably 90% 90 way, 90 way through the first blog for AWS on their open source blog showing how to deploy OpenFAS to EKS. I know Stefan's done a bit of work around this in the past, um, but this would be published on their official blog, which is quite cool. Weaveworks have been really helpful with um, helping to promote OpenFAS and just get it in front of people. I like their monitoring solution. It gives you a really good view of what's going on inside your cluster, what functions are talking to what. Um, if you like the kind of data you get from Istio. Um, if you install Weave Cloud, um, ask Stefan for a trial, you get very similar data. It's very visual um, and rich information. Portainer put together a blog post about OpenFAS. Portainer works with Docker Swarm right now, and it's a really easy way of just managing your containers. And then there's a few things going on with DigitalOcean, Scaleway, and Pulumi. Pulumi, um, I'm hoping to, to catch up with them soon. They have a, um, a language, they're calling it a cloud native language, where they can automate the internet. So they are creating AWS infrastructure, installing Helm charts, and running Lambda functions. And one of the things that they've done now is to build a provider into their code base for OpenFAS. Um, I shared that with a few people. There's a Slack channel where you can find out a bit more too. Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff happening. And if you've got any other ideas of good combinations, do just uh, let me know. So that's it for the updates. I wanted to now show you what I've been doing with GitLab. So if you're not familiar with this product or project, um, from my perspective, it's I would describe it as a version of GitHub that you can run yourself. And there's a, a public version of this as well. So it has Git packaged in. I created a, a repo earlier and I called it Ruby functions. And you can see this looks a little bit like what you might be used to if you've used Bitbucket or one of the other similar products. And we've got an open fast function here. It's got some code called greet. It's a Ruby function and it basically says, um, you know, we like GitLab, which your favorite FAS function. And that was a change that was made by uh, a guy called Michael recently to that file. So what I wanted to do is find out if I created this, what would I have to do in a GitLab way to have continuous deployment in the easiest way possible? And so I, I dug into this and it was all new for me. It might be new for you as well. And, uh, I guess the guys on the call can tell whether they've done this right or not. But what I've done is define something a bit like you'd see in, in Travis, which has a single step. It's called a build. It uses a Docker image, which contains a Docker in Docker plus the OpenFAS CLI package together. Why? Um, because it was a bit quicker than just using Docker in Docker and then adding the CLI. 
We then use the OpenFast CLI to build whatever's in the repo. We log into my private Docker registry that I've set up with HTTPS. We push up any images that were built, and then I log into the uh, OpenVAS gateway using another secret, and then I deploy. And so we've got this really nice um, basic flow of just what you do normally on your laptop, which is fast CLI build, push, deploy, but all done in this script. Now, one of the things that I really like is that the, the CI and CD for this is all integrated in one place. And we can see one day ago, took 34 seconds to do the whole thing. And I can get into the logs here. You see <clears throat> it's pre-pulled the Docker image. It's done the FAS CLI build, pulled some different images down for Ruby. And at the end, there's a URL, which I should be able to open in a browser. Right, and it's saying, hello, we like GitLab. So let's see if we can change that code. And we should get that deployed into OpenFAS in about 20 seconds. Now you could check this out with GitHub, or sorry, you could check this out with Git, or you can edit in the web IDE, or just, just do a single edit. And so this is kind of a cool feature that allows you to put a more detailed commit message. Um, hello from from the office hours call. Check out meeting.openfast.com. And that's that URL that's got the meeting notes where you can head over. Now, if you work at a, at a company like VMware and you need to do a sign off, you can put a sign off message here. And then if I hit commit, at this point in time, that webhook will have landed and the pipeline will have already started. We'll see some of the output already. And we've almost finished that Docker build. There's not much to push up in this example because all I've changed is a single file and that's already been deployed. So if we hit the URL right now, it's probably gonna give us the old message. But no, I was actually, it was so quick, it's already up to date. And so there you go. We've got a full end-to-end um, -end build in probably about 22 seconds. But there's a lot more that you can do with, with GitLab and you don't necessarily need to use GitLab to have this experience. You can, um, you can use anything you like. But what I liked here was just that simplicity adding a single file. Does anyone have any questions or comments before we move on to Martin's demo? That was a great demo. Thank you, Alex. I love the uh, from builds to deploy and live in uh, 22 seconds. I might steal that. <laughs> Yeah, Alex, that was really great. Uh, thanks for doing that. No problem. And uh, Ed, this is um, both GitLab and the GitLab runner, both running on a packet. Nice. On the small instance. Um, it was very easy to install. Um, I just I didn't install it in Kubernetes, just installed it on the machine, and then I um, set up a runner. I've got HTTPS here through Let's Encrypt. Again, that was just literally a single edit to a file and it just worked. Nice. Yeah, I've been super impressed with how easy GitLab is to get. Once you have it running, it gives you a lot of power. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at at the moment is how to get the webhooks from GitLab into OpenFAS Cloud, which is a uh, another project some of you may be aware of, may, may be using, may have worked on. And what that would mean is that you basically don't need to add this file to each one of your repos. Every time you do a commit, 
uh, a webhook would be sent to OpenFAS Cloud, which would be authenticated to your account, clone, build, and then do a rolling update to your function, including adding any secrets that you had um, as sealed secrets. And so that's what uh, Martin's going to show us now. But this is going to be with um, the current implementation that runs on GitHub. So if I stop sharing my screen, we'll go over to Martin Dekoff. So hello guys, uh, today I'm going to be showing you uh, what is uh, the OpenFast Cloud. So I already set up two empty repositories, which are working function and not working function. And uh, I already have my OpenFast Cloud test. This is uh, my application. So I'm, I'm going to select uh, the repositories which I'm going, uh, which I want uh, the OpenFast Cloud to uh, to work on. So here we go. And you can see the permissions there, right? Read your code and write commit statuses. It's very fine-grained permissions that are needed. So I already have my uh, repositories installed. I have the application. So now I'm going to push uh, about the functions to the repositories. Note that one of the functions won't build uh, in, the, in the normal way. That's because in normal circumstances, circumstances. If I want to build a function, it won't let me. So the OpenFast Cloud, because it uh, runs on OpenFast as a functions, it won't let the existing function build. So I'm going to push. The function. I, uh, I forgot to show you uh, here is where my function will be, sh uh, will be showing. This is the, the overview function we have. So let me push this. Uh, we trigger uh, the building, uh, we trigger open fast cloud by uh, push event for now. So uh, we have to wait a little bit. We can uh, also, another thing I want to, to mention is that I renamed already the file, which is Takiyamo. And uh, I have the cloud demo function, which is like this. This is example of, uh, uh, yeah, something I played <laughs> That's around. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, let's fix that. We haven't seen the broken one yet. Whoa, wait a second. Uh, on this, let me. Do you see what I'm sharing? Yeah, that's the one that worked, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one that worked. Have you, have you got the GitHub commit status? Can you show us that? Yeah, wait a second. So. Let me just find the push event. Ooh, I don't, oh, very strange. The not working function deployed. Hmm. Why did this happen? Well, no, this I, is think very you're, I think your working one deployed, didn't it? Nah, uh, yeah, th this works, but this shouldn't. Oh my, oh, I, I think I pushed the wrong function. <laughs> no, I didn't. So I think the, what Martin wanted to show us, I don't know if you've, have you added the code for that one? It looks like it's not been staged. Uh, I think maybe that's the problem because I did everything before the 
have a look at your local uh, your local get do a get status. So what Martin's trying to show us is, and I think it's quite it's quite cool because you you're trying to show us uh, a few things at once. We missed it. If you click on the commit statuses on the working one, mm. where it says nineteen commits. If you click on that on that, you can just show us the status that came in. Yeah, this is the working one. Yeah. If you click on that, and then we should see the statuses by each commit. If you hover over it, the uh, the tick on the left, there's a, a green tick. Click on that. And so this is this is what you get now, which you weren't getting before, is this granularity. There's a status for the whole um, set of functions, and there's a status for the individual function. And when you click on details, that should take it should take you to the URL for that, and we should see your really cool uh, cloud function. Or maybe that bit's not just set up right. But that that would normally take you through to the cloud function. Um, and then the other demo that Mark was going to show us was when it it doesn't build because it's broken, right? So if you look at the commit statuses for your broken repo. It should have an X on it telling you that it couldn't build it. Uh, I omitted the fixed function. That's why it, that, that's why it works. Yeah. So do you, do you want to add the commit on your local machine and push it up? Because I don't think you committed the, the breaking yeah, yeah. bit of that. It's nothing like a live demo, is there? There we go. So it's doing the right thing. It was working and now Martin's making a change. He's not really tested it. And there's a bit of red, red line in there saying it's broken. And we should see a commit status come through on GitHub to say it's pending, it's building it. And then after um, build kit has been in there, tried to build it and failed, it will update and we should get, if you click on that, we should start to get a red uh, X come up next to it in a bit. Now I think you're running this on a on a single host, aren't you? So it's a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, there's a community version of this running on GKE that is probably as fast as the demo that I showed with GitHub. So have we got the error? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. So I guess this was it. It's a little fail, but your, your uh, microphone is not in front of your face anymore. Yeah, uh, I t I said that uh, this was a little fail, but I hope I showcased some things of OpenFast Cloud. So for the the one with the clouds where it says OpenFast, is there anything you can change and push so we could see it change? Mm. To add the change, yeah, of course. The working one, yeah. Now it should work. Has anyone got any questions about this? What Martin's shown us? You're using GitHub Checks API, I guess? Mm. Status is API. They're very similar, um, but this is, used as a, this is using the statuses API. And now it shows that it built a few seconds ago. If we open the link, I didn't say anything because um, it, yeah. I should send a request. So you, you fixed it? Yeah. Well, so the thing that I said earlier that that's one of the next features to build for this is to um, if the function failed to build like that first time where we had the typo or if a unit test failed is just to be able to bubble that up in the UI or in the commit status so you can click on it and see the reason without having to rebuild it on your local machine. Um, some of the ways this is different from what I showed you with GitLab is that you you already have the the instructions on how to build 
um, in your stack YAML file that works in OpenVAS. There's nothing to add there. It's just we read that, process it. Um, and I think, did you manage to get yourself logged into the, the bigger environment, the 06, 06 SIO one? Uh, I managed to do that the, the last time, but now I, I haven't really tried. Okay. Well, that's, that's fine. So any other questions for Martin about this demo? What we're doing is pushing code to GitHub. Um, an app that you've installed only has very fine grained permissions to read your code and add commit statuses, builds and deploys them into a cluster that you've predefined. Okay, well, if anyone wants to try this, there's two ways to do it. The first is to install it yourself on your own system, uh, like Martin's done, and then you can just, you can hack on it, do whatever you like, keep it private, tell your friends to join you, or um, you can join the community cluster where I've provisioned a GKE cluster with some capacity in it, and we have about maybe 30 or 40 functions there from different people in the community and people are using that for demos. It's got Let's Encrypt and you get your own domain name with it as well. Great. Well, thank you, Martin. You're welcome. Um, Radislav, do you want to um, start sharing your screen? Um, yeah. Uh, ah. Okay. Yeah. Share screen. Mm. I'll start with the presentation, actually. Yeah, sure. Is it showing? Yeah. OK. Because I cannot. Um, yeah, I'll try to. Can I switch the slide? I'm, am I switching the slides? Because it's all black on my side. No, it's not working. You might, have to, you might have to do it without being in full screen. Ah, OK. Still showing as black. Um, okay, I might try to. That's better. I could, oh, I could see that then. Okay, as you said about the live demos, I, <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah, for some reason I cannot. I can see that, and then it moved. Okay, can you see that? No. Uh, um, and my zoom. Window is, I, I cannot see it. Did you share the whole desktop? No, I shared just the application, but share uh, the whole desktop in my. I'm I'm running Ubuntu, and for some reason now I cannot go to the Zoom uh, window that I used to. Yeah, the, the application. I can. That I can see that now. If you leave it where it is, uh, that's fine. No matter which window I choose, that, I always. That's connect. working now. <laughs> Okay, I, I can. If you that's want, I can try to can log out and. That's working. Yeah, yeah, I can hear, but for some reason, I cannot see the application. Okay. Do you just want to talk us through that what you were gonna say instead? Um. Yeah. We're, well, we're not gonna have time to reconnect. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm. It's something with my laptop. So yeah, uh, basically, hi. Uh, my name is Rudoslav Dimitrov. Um, I, I I got introduced to OpenFast uh, about a month ago. I participated. I, I actually attended the event shared by that was held in Sofia by VMware, and um, there was this idea presented with the Raspberry Pi's cluster. And uh, I thought basically to replace the whole physical setup with a virtualized one. Um, so yeah, my idea was to create a set of uh, ARM VMs that I can use to deploy OpenFast on top of it. And so, uh, ah, I have the, yeah. ah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have created the setup. I have um, deployed OpenFast on top of it. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I will be able to present the demo with these issues. Um, uh, can you stop sharing your screen? Oh. 
can you stop sharing your screen, for instance, if I, so I can try to share mine? But no, the application can't. Is there anything else you want to tell us about the um, what you're doing with the virtual machines? Um, yeah, I, it's a bad thing that I cannot show you the demo or the slides. I'm sorry about that. It's yeah, it, it's not my fault somehow. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, I created uh, a set of a set of free VMs that I can um, use to install OpenFast on top of them. Uh, everything went smoothly. Um, I have verified the OpenFast installation with uh, one of the functions from the store. Um, this is basically useful for, uh, well, you can easily scale the, the whole setup. You can, uh, you don't need to buy the, the hardware. You can, um, basically it will have the ARM development. Um, I'm planning to to push the tutorial, so it's available for everyone. And yeah, um, I'm using QMU for emulating the ARM machines. Uh, for the time being, it's for ARM v7. Um, I plan to extend it for ARM v8 as well. It shouldn't be much of a difference, actually. It's just the file system. Um, so yeah, um, I'm really sorry that I cannot show you the demo. I'm using Ubuntu with Zoom. I think it's a bit not consistent in its behavior. <laughs> yeah. Okay, not to worry. Maybe what we could do is um, get a short recording on YouTube in the week, maybe with a screen capture, and you could share that, and I'll send the link around. Mm, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, I can do the demo tomorrow on our internal meeting that we have. I mean, you already have the presentation. Yeah, we could record yeah. that. All yeah, right, yeah. sounds good. Exactly. So, I know we have a few new faces here today. That, that was everything we wanted to show you. That was everything we had planned for the, uh, for the demos. Um, unless there's anyone else who has been missed, I think that was it. So I just wanted to give people a chance to, we've got about 20 minutes just to, to, um, to talk if they want to, if they've got any questions, comments, want to talk about what they've been working on. Um, the floor is open, please feel free. So this is uh, Shane, I'd be happy to go first and break the ice here. Sure. Uh, so, Alex, nice to see you again. I don't know if you recall, we met here in Mountain View a couple months ago and uh, did a meetup uh, locally. Uh, I worked for uh, Rackin and Packet both, actually. Uh, and what I've been working on recently is deploying OpenFast on top of Kubernetes on bare metal. So, Rackin provides digital rebar provision, which is uh, open source with Rackin, the company behind it. Uh, bare metal provisioning solution. Uh, we do workflow. Some of the workflow we do is our Kubernetes rebar uh, immutable bootstrap uh, content pack. Uh, and on top of that, I've been layering the open fast stuff. So I've been working on a content pack to go from turning a machine physically on to running open fast within a few minutes, uh, including all of the workflow automation that would be necessary to do things like BIOS, RAID, uh, OS setup and configuration, injecting uh, secrets and keys, and all of the various things necessary to get your application stack up and running. So that's that's what I've been doing. Uh, OpenFast itself has been a little bit of a, a pet side project for me, uh, primarily because we currently drive the uh, Rackn web portal uh, through Amazon Lambda uh, as a React Node.js. And uh, there are lots of problems with that, and I'd like to bring it back in-house to a couple of packet clusters uh, with OpenFast running our portal. So that's my sort of pet project for it. We've had a lot of customer interest, both in the Kubernetes store, story, and then there's been a lot of perk up. Um, it hasn't been solid interest yet, but a lot of um, sort of companies perking up when they talk about being able to do function. Uh, as a service uh, on their bare metal on-prem. So uh, we're really looking forward to driving that uh, forward. Uh, also looking at a potential engagement with Intel with their Optane 
stuff in conjunction with Packet to do edge data center deployments on Intel Optane systems uh, with function as a service as a platform for uh, accelerating edge deployments and edge services. Uh, so that's me in a nutshell there. That's really cool. Great to hear that, um, especially about the, uh, the, the rack end provisioning. Is that something you think you'd be able to show us at some point? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Um, I, could, I have to dust off my OpenFast uh, stuff and make sure it works with your current builds. It's been a month or two since I've done it, um, but I'd be happy to do that. Um, probably be able to do that in a week or two. I'm not sure how often you run the community meetup. Okay. Yeah, if you, um, once, you, once you've got it running, let me know, and uh, we'll try and get you in on the next one. Okay. We also run our own community meetup every two weeks. Uh, we're doing ours at 11 a.m. today, um, but in the next one, I was hoping to uh, also demo the OpenFast stuff, so there'll be a, um, co possibly a cooperative we could do between uh, digital rebar provision and OpenFast meetups there, if there's interest for that. Sounds good to me. Uh, I think that would be cool to combine them. And you know, let us know if there's anything that you need, anything that will help you with uh, proof of concept with the Racken web portal. Um, trying some of that out in OpenFAS. We've got a few people that have been, um, you know, doing similar stuff recently. Excellent. I will definitely uh, ping you when I get ready to start doing that shift and playing with it. I'm imagining running into some issues with React and Node.js and pulling that down. We, everything is running smoothly in Lambda, so I'm hoping we can make it a pretty easy transition. That it might be actually an interesting story on transitioning a real-world uh, Lambda service to OpenFast as well. Yeah, that would be really interesting. Okay, cool. so Thank you. Any, anyone else want to go next? Who wants to speak next? Okay, um, I can pick on somebody who I know what they're doing. Richard's got a blog post coming soon. You want to tell us a bit more about what you've been doing? Richard Key? Yes, yeah, so I've been working on a blog post, which is a continuation of the demo that we uh, we provided in the last community call. So um, just a write-up of um, how to deploy to DigitalOcean, a uh, single node instance in DigitalOcean using Ansible. Uh, that should be ready, um, hopefully by this time next week, publication. And then beyond that, I've been having a look at uh, whether we can extend the existing script to help deploy OpenFast Cloud. Um, and the final bit of news from me really is the YouTube channel. So, um, calls like this, uh, I'm taking a video and creating little demo videos from, from each one and topping and tailing it with the branding. Uh, and that's that's uploaded to YouTube. We've got our own OpenFast channel, which is growing slowly. We've got eight subscribers now. So if you haven't had a look at that, go and have a look, get subscribing, get notified when the uh, when the new videos get put there. <clears throat> yeah, definitely subscribe to that. Um, yeah, I've been uh, kind of busy with uh, sort of my day job, but I finally reached a point where I'm actually starting to sort of uh, integrate OpenFAS into what I've been doing there. Um, possibly it'll be a couple of months before it's public, but uh, starting to actually sort of get to do a bit of OpenFAS work again, which has been good. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, I'm starting to work on my blog post about uh, running open class uh, on Fargate. Uh, so uh, a couple of community, community meetings ago, I showed um, using Terraform to push open fast onto Fargate uh, nodes. And yeah, going to write a blog post about that. Um, I'd also be interested uh, in a pull request I, I brought up the issue of um, sort of code formatting in the repos tabs versus spaces. Um, there's a good uh, community uh, plugin called uh, Edis Config, which I've used in a lot of other open source projects. Um, don't know if people in the open fans community would, would like to use that. Basically, most common IDEs support the Edis Config 
uh, YAML file. Um, and then it just sets your editor to um, the standard that you've defined in that file. So I keep, um, one of the common problems you get in open files is if you edit a make file um, and you can quite easily put spaces in it instead of tabs. And that's quite annoying, then you get a cryptic error message. Okay, well, that sounds like something we should look at. I've, I've not seen that happen. Um, I tend to use Visual Studio Code or Vim to edit stuff. If I use Vim, I run Go Format afterwards. You see, it doesn't work on make files. Um, but tabs and spaces should be should probably be a mute issue for Golang files if we're using Go for enforcing Go Format. I think it's more for other files like YAML files, make files. Okay. Things like that. Yeah. Um, anybody got an opinion on that? Who's com committing code? Not particularly, it's not really been an issue for myself. Okay. Cool. All right. We've got a few more minutes left. Did anybody have any ideas? Um, did anybody feel like they wanted to contribute in any of the areas that I showed? Or have any other ideas, things that they'd like to see? We talked about um, opportunities in OpenVAS Cloud, um, expanding the support for effectively microservices deployed and managed for OpenVAS, uh, additional blog posts. This is something that I think might be an easy way to contribute something is through the, the function store, finding um, something that's not there that, that you could add. Actually, there is a, there's a demo that I can show you while um, we wait. Uh, hey guys, I'm Kirill from uh, VMware. Um, I joined the OpenFast uh, local VMware community very, very recently, so I'm wrapping my head around uh, OpenFast Cloud, and I'm currently looking into the exposing the locks uh, of the build. So I'm still early uh, in this in this process, so not much to share, but hopefully have some ideas. Around, I'm checking the checks API of GitHub. That. Um. So here's the other thing that I was going to demo that I didn't. Well, we have a few more minutes left, which is I can enter an email address in here. Um, have I been pwned? This is by Troy Hunt, and basically, uh, what he's telling me is there's been four different breaches. Um, at, of different companies, big and small. Um, you know, these could be any company, and basically, somebody's managed to get in. They've leaked the, either the email addresses or the password usernames. What what he has is an API that allows you to do something slightly different, which is actually put a password, which you can't do in the UI, but you can put this password in, and um, by using his API and this new function in the store, just deploy it in one click. You can find out if a password has been um, basically used used in a breach, how many times. So I'll let somebody call out a password for me to check. I'll just show you how it works first off, and then someone can tell me something. I'll try it. It's been used over 353 thousand times what was found that many times in a in a leak what do we want to try try alex alice uh, oh no <laughs> <laughs> i knew i shouldn't have been using my name as my password <laughs> i wonder what else have we got that's a secure password apparently GitLab is as well. But if you look at something like test1234, that's been used a huge amount of times, or change me, um, 64,000 times. And it's quite, quite scary, really. Um, and this isn't the whole internet. This is just what's been breached and then been made available through this API. 
And so I thought that would make a really neat uh, demoable function for people to try out. Um, there's not a lot in the store really, maybe two dozen functions, maybe three dozen. Uh, please, you know, have a think about what would demo well. The kind of criteria that we're looking for is anything that you can really just deploy and get instant feedback from. So there's one here for Tesseract, the optical character recognition. I actually already have that deployed. Um, and what that does, it takes a URL and it will tell you what text is in that URL. So that's the kind of level that we're thinking about. If you've got to type in a complicated JSON structure just to invoke the function, it's probably not as useful for the function store. Um, so we find something like that. Type in invoke, and in this instance, it's gonna, um, it's not happy for some reason. Interesting. Well, it managed to break that, but basically it would normally bring you back some text. Try one more. So we're almost out of time. I hope you enjoyed the demos, and um, thanks everyone for joining. There we go, it's working now. Um, if you want to follow up on anything that you've seen today, you can reach us on Slack um, or you can email me directly, I don't mind. Before you end, else? Alex, can I just say a quick note from the GitLab site? Yeah, sure. Okay, hi, hi again everyone, I'm Priyanka and uh, I work um, as a director of Cloud Native Alliances at GitLab and we've been talking a lot with Alex, as he said, over the last month, few weeks. Um, and I just wanted to say that uh, we at GitLab are taking a big serious uh, interest in serverless right now. And that's why the conversations with Alex are very helpful. Um, we're hiring for serverless developers. So if anyone's interested, shoot me a note. And product uh, managers. Sorry? And hiring for a product manager. Oh, right, that too. <laughs> Mark is our head of product. Um, so both PMs and uh, engineers. So if you're interested, shoot me a note. Um, and otherwise, like it's been really fun collaborating with Alex so far. Him and I both submitted a talk to KubeCon uh, this weekend. So fingers crossed on that. It's about serverless and GitOps, which I think is fabulous. Um, and yeah, uh, we, are, we are right now figuring out um, just how exactly we will offer you know, running functions on GitLab. So OpenFaz has presented a pretty good way to do that. And we're, uh, this is our sort of time to get experience working and building with serverless. And uh, in the next six months, our strategy will uh, shape up. So, so yeah, I just wanted to say a quick note that we're working on these things. We're really interested uh, to talk to people who might be uh, intrigued by that and I uh, wanted to thank Alex for his uh, collaboration and support so far. Great, thanks Franka. And if you want to chat with uh, Pranka, she's in our Slack community um, and uh, you know, I'm right. sure she'd love to hear from you. Well, thanks everybody. I'm going to stop the recording now and then I'll upload it to, um, to YouTube in the coming days. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Alex. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye, everyone.